Singer Four Star Playhouse presents Charles Boyer, Dick Powell, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Brought to you by your neighborhood Singer Sewing Centers from coast to coast and the more than 32,000 members of the Singer Organization who make, sell, and service Singer sewing machines for both industry and the home. Singer, the outstanding name in sewing machines for over 100 years. Always look for the famous Singer and Red S trademarks. Tonight on Four Star Playhouse, we present Charles Boyer in The Wild Bunch. My dear Leonora, allow me to make an observation. You are, without any doubt, the most ravishing creature in the whole world. What are you doing married to me? You're a very handsome husband, George. And you're gentle. You'll make a wonderful father. <laughs> what a lovely thought. Um, I'd like nothing better. In time. What is it? Did I say something? Where did you go? I'm here. Ah. Oh, I know. You're feeling sad for our honeymoon. You think we're leaving it behind, back there on that pink and blue island, but we're not. We're taking it with us. I am a little sad, George, but... Look, darling, a month ago we didn't know each other. We met, we're married, I didn't think it was possible to love anyone as deeply as I love you. George, I have a confession to make. <laughs> Darling, really, we're adult people. Well, as a matter of fact, I have two confessions to make. Two, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not very many, come to think of it. And why spoil our enchantment with some unimportant, unrelated reality? Well, first of all, I... I have money. Well, I shan't hold that against you. We know so little about one another. Listen, darling, I realize that our courtship was chaotic. Whirlwind, I believe, is the cliche. But merely adding time to it would not have made me want you more or love you better or be more serious about sharing my life with you. You remember when I said that you'd make a wonderful father? Leonora, can you tell? So soon? Well, brother, I didn't exactly lie to you, but by not telling the truth, that is sort of a lie, isn't it? It isn't what? I have three children. I'm going to be a father. You're using the present participle tense. I am a father, and this is no time for grammar lessons. But you knew I was a widow, George. Well, of course, but uh, why didn't you tell me that there were three little widows? I mean, uh, three little... Uh, They're not all little. Some big ones? Do you mind? How big? I mean, oh, I don't know. I'm being very foolish. I, I'm certain of that. After all, if they're your children, they must be exactly like you. I love this time of year, don't you, George? Well, they are like you, aren't they? Kiss me, darling. Very well, but when I finish kissing you, I expect some kind of an answer. 
Now, do you think everything can be solved with a kiss? Of time? Oh, the children, you just look wonderful. Oh, of course, children, David, Carlotta, Louise, your father. Well, I don't think. Now, everybody kiss everybody. Leonora, you think everything. Kiss Pete! Is... Oh, David, your father. <laughs> this is completely impossible. Where's Miss Hyde? Old Iron Face? She left in a huff a week ago. She slapped Carlotta, so Carlotta tripped her up and sat on her. Pretty good fight while it lasted. I've done the best I could. Ain't nothing a body can do. Then done the best they could. Oh, of course, Aunt Cassie. Oh, here's a telegram for you, Mr. Drew. I mean, Mrs. Burrell. Come day before yesterday. Somebody's already opened it. Oh, everybody's read it. The contents of that telegram is common knowledge around here. And it's for the turnpike, if you ask me. Well, why doesn't somebody just tell Leonora, I mean, your mother, what is in the telegram, then? Aunt Kate's sick. You know, your great-aunt Kate, the one with all the money, in Virginia. You have to go to Virginia right away. You should have been there yesterday. Oh, poor Aunt Kate. I've got to go. But I can't go unless you'd... And I don't suppose you'd want to. Well, uh, darling, if, uh, if she's very close to you, I suppose you must go. I'll, uh, I'll stay here with, with the children. Well, uh, where? Don't you want to make preparations? Oh, yes, of course. Children. Uncle Sim, Aunt Cassie, you can get the bags out of the car later. Carlotta, would you call that sweet Mr. Henry at the airline office and ask him to get me a ticket on the plane? Louise, do you know where my light tan suitcase is? A little horror, I'm sure. Well, let's see. Hello, is, is Mr. Henry there? <laughs> You'll be safe in here for the time being. Oh, them youngins. They're a wild bunch. And they got to be tamed. Tamed? Yes, sir, tamed. I presume all this belonged to their father. Oh, yes, sir. He was quite a sportsman, God rest him. Well, Uncle Sim, if he couldn't tame them... He never tried to tame them. And if you're asking me, I think the poor gentleman just became a sportsman so as he'd have plenty of excuses to get away from the house. <laughs> I think the poor man just, uh, well, he just wore himself out running away. Now, there ain't no sense in your worrying about it, mister. That is, if you don't mind my saying so. Because what has to be is... Now, you'd best try to figure out a way to tame them before they tame you. But, Uncle Sim, I am already tame. Uh, that's what I thought. That ain't the way to do it. You can't go peeking around corners around here. You got a race around them. Dinner's ready. Mm. You going out to dinner, Mr. Burrell? No, of course not. Why? Well, it just sort of throws me when anybody dresses up around here. Oh, oh um, Aunt Cassie, um, why sh Well, I thought perhaps, um, you know, you, you know the children so well. Yeah. What would you consider my best approach to them? Get them. Get them before they get you. <laughs> Good evening. Louise, Carlotta, David. Good evening, George. Well, 
What did we learn in school today, if anything? We didn't go to school today. Why not? We had a bad case of ditchitis. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What's <laughs> 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 so funny? Oh, ditchitis, I see. You just all felt like uh, ditching school. Well, that's not exactly playing the game fair, is it? We don't like school. And school doesn't like us either. You'd be amazed in the years to come, my dear children, how many things one must do in this world that one does not exactly like. As for school, I can assure you that you will all look back on it as a pleasant time, during which there was demanded of you very little of the responsibilities and cares of this world. Well, perhaps I can show you some enjoyment of education, At least I can try. Starting tomorrow. We are not going to school tomorrow. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, we're not. Tomorrow is Saturday. This beautiful decorative stitching was done automatically on a Singer sewing machine, but not on a Singer automatic machine, and not on a Singer sewing machine designed especially for zigzag stitching. This decorative stitching was done automatically on a straight stitching Singer, exactly like the one you may have in your home right now. Sounds impossible, I know, but it's true. And here's the magic, the wonderful Singer invention that makes it possible. The Singer automatic zigzagger. It's exclusive with Singer, costs only $14.95. And just wait till you see how simple it is to use. And yet the wonderful work it will do. You see, you simply attach it to your machine and select your stitch pattern. We're only showing four here, but there are many others, each marked with the type of stitch it produces. Arrowhead, domino, blind stitch, zigzag. Now we'll take the arrowhead. Now we just slip it on here, close the cover, and start the machine. And just look at these handsome arrowhead stitches, all done automatically on a regular Singer sewing machine like the one you may have in your home right now. For it's really true. With the Singer automatic zigzagger, you can now do automatic zigzag stitching, not only on the exciting new Singer automatic, but on this featherweight portable, and on most straight needle and all slant needle Singers, too. You'll use it just the way you would if you owned a more expensive automatic machine to trim your children's clothes for decorating linens, for beautiful applique work. And you'll be thrilled at the time you'll save hemming, overcasting seams, because you do all these extra touches automatically. The astonishing new Singer Automatic Zigzagger is only $14.95. See it demonstrated at your Singer Sewing Center or phone for a no-obligation demonstration in your own home on your own sewing. Do zigzag stitching automatically on your present Singer sewing machine with this wonderful Singer invention. Exclusive with Singer, it's sold only at your Singer sewing centers. Good morning, children. Mm. Not a very chilly day, is it? You always have breakfast on the floor like this? Only when we want to. I see. Good morning, Mr. Burrell. Good morning. What do you have for your breakfast? Oh, just some coffee. You can clean up that mess a little bit there. Ain't no use pulling this together. They tear it apart much faster than this body can move. About where's the hour, I'll take it. Oh, uh, Carlotta, may I have the front page? Jeff is sitting on it. Night. Who is Pete? The cat. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, David. Just a bad case of detritus. I'm worried about Pete. 
You really are, aren't you? Well, I can't find him anywhere in the house. And when he didn't show up for his breakfast, I started to worry. Pete's a very hungry cat. Well, let's go and look for him. Will you? In the rain? Sure. I'm beginning to worry about old Pete myself. Hey! Here's Pete. Wrapped into the rain. Poor Pete! Come on, Pete. Get out of here before you liquefy. How'd he get in there? Let's ask him later. He got in. How come he can't get out? Well, that's philosophy, David. Right now, I'd set up for a crowbar. I see a cat won't go in anywhere unless his whiskers have room, too. Maybe he shaved last night. How'd he ever get in there? Well, let's save that enigma for a nice, dry day. Yes. Oh, poor oh, 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 Look at him. Let's take it. Come on. Well, now, David, I want you to take yourself into bed for about an hour and get your blood warm again. But what about Pete? Oh, Pete can get in bed with you as soon as he finishes his milk. You know, I think we ought to fix up a bed for Pete. Get a big box, hammer out one side, and line it with some old silk. I think Pete would like that. Good. There are lots of big old boxes up in the attic. Fine. Now, into bed with you. Everything all right? Everything's all right. Thanks for worrying about Pete. Well, I was glad to get the chance to know him. Here he comes. Oh, <laughs> Pete. Oh, I'm sorry, Carlota. I'm looking for... Don't you dare look. I won't. Just looking for something to make a bed for Pete. Won't take me long. It's poetry. I write poetry. I suppose you think that's funny. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Well, most people laugh when you tell them you write poetry, don't they? Well, I would feel very sorry for them if they did. May I? If you wish. I want to write plays and books, too. You should write plays and books. Anything you care to write. You write very well, Carlotta. Do I? Do I have something to say? Do you want to say it very badly? I think I'd die if I didn't. Then you have something to say. I'm, I'm scared, though. And I have doubts, too. Our doubts are traitors. What? Shakespeare. On confidence. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. I'm a book publisher, Galata. Pretty good one, too. I'm looking forward to publishing one of yours someday. George, would you do something for me? Of course. I'm supposed to go to Miss Hammond's finishing school, and I don't want to be finished. There's a little college in Vermont. I know it's far away from Maryland, but that's where I want to go. I'd learn something there. About writing? Yes. Miss Hammonds, I'd be just another girl who's good at games and could always be counted on to win another prize at the horse show. But that's not what I want. I want to write and write and write. What does your mother say? Leo's a dear, a wonderful mother, but Leo went to Miss Hammonds. <laughs> I see. Well. I'll talk to her. There's, there's no reason why you should. I haven't been very nice to you. Well, perhaps it was not altogether your fault. After all, we came at you pretty quickly with the idea of a new father and all. Will you give me another chance? You'll never run out of them. I guess nobody's really tough around here. They're sort of scared. You know, Jeff, I think you need a bath. And this being Saturday night, you're going to have you one. You shouldn't go. Well, maybe that's just the reason I am gone. You better not if you want my advice. Who needs it? Stop being Mother's little helper, will you? Besides, that crowd's too old for you, and a little too goofy, if you ask me. Well, nobody asked you. Nobody told you. Nobody cares what you think, period. I can take care of myself. That's fairly questionable. 
Good night. I'm being picked up in a few minutes. Don't wait up for me. Oh, Louise. Louise, it's a bit difficult for me to say anything, but uh, I wish you'd be very honest with me. Would your mother approve of your going out with these people? Leo has never approved of the deans. But then, I don't approve of everything Leo does either. You haven't earned the right of approval or disapproval yet, Louise. Neither by years nor manners. One if I land, two if I see. That's my signal. Good night. going to look so beautiful. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? George, please come and get me. Please. Louise, what's the matter? Please come and get me. I'll be on the porch at the Dean's. Do you know where it is? Well, I, I'll find out where it is. I'll be right over. What's the matter, Louise? Huh? I'm going home, Johnny. Nah, you can't go home until I take you. Hey, what's the matter? Party getting a little rough? Oh, sure. But it's a good crowd, a lot of laughs. <laughs> You're not too particular. I'm very particular. I thought you knew that. Oh, you never know what you know until you know, you know? But you're very cute. I know that. Leave me alone and go back to some less particular people. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to take you back with me. Now, look, Louise. I told you I'm going to take you back, and I am. No, you're not. Get into the car, Louise. Good night. Just like that, huh? Just like that. I ought to give you a lot of trouble. Don't. It has a way of spreading out. Might be just a little more trouble than you'd want at this moment. Anything else? It was very kind of you to come... Shut up, Louise. I'm sorry, Louise, but you were in far more danger than you realize. So don't toss it all away with a thanks for coming and a fond hope that I'll be there the next time. You can't always look after yourself. So make certain you're around nice people who can. I know I'm making noises like a father, but uh, it's about time somebody did. It was a bad situation. I know that now. Perhaps not the worst this time. But just check the front page of your newspaper for the variations. Grow up, Louise. If you're going to be a big girl, start thinking like one. I will. I promise you that. And I promise you something. You won't be going out with any boys that haven't been first received by your mother and myself. Invite anybody you want to the house. As long as we know the people you know, everything will be fine. Can I get you anything, Louise? Something warm to drink, perhaps. No, no, thank you, George. Well, then I think you better go to bed. Try to dream some bright dreams and forget what happened tonight. And, Louise, let you and I forget it completely. No sense in worrying your mother. You mean you're not going to tell Leo about it? No, of course not. Why should I? It will never happen again, will it? Not ever. And thank you very much. What is it? Something else? Well, what you said, George, about... about inviting boys to the house. Always looks like such a pig pen around here. <laughs> I agree. Well, I was thinking... maybe... 
maybe we could do something about it. Maybe we could. Would you like that, George? I mean, if we all got together and helped clean up, sort of made the place look like something? I'd like that very much. Good. I know just where we'll start. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> You know, that's not a bad idea. You can learn things much faster when you can sing them. Do you know what 12 times 12 is? 12 times 12 is 144. Four. <laughs> Whoa! Well, let's not have any more of that stampede stuff around here. We've got some class now. Let's keep it. Wonderful to be home. Nothing's changed at all. <laughs> Our star, Charles Boyer, will return in a moment. Tonight's play was brought to you by the Singer Sewing Machine Company. Next week, your host will be Bristol Myers. Announcing Ban, a new deodorant, antiperspirant, and pleasing lotion all rolled into one. Ban is so much better because... It rolls on. Ban, a new kind of lotion deodorant, rolls on from the built-in marble applicator. National tests prove Ban is easier to apply than drippy sprays. Ban is more effective than messy creams. Get the new lotion deodorant, B-A-N, Ban. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Four Star Playhouse and all the members of the single organization, thank you for being with us this evening. We hope that you enjoyed our play, and we hope that you'll be with us again next week. Good night. <laughs>